His name was James Byron Dean. He was an actor. He died in 1955 at the age of 24. He had starred in just three pictures, only one of which had been released prior to his death. Yet before he was in his grave, he was already a myth. What you're about to see is one man's recollection, an image of the actor as seen through the eyes of a friend. Like all memories, it is intensely personal, elusive, and incomplete. Yet it refuses to die. <laughs> Last night. James Dean again? Yes, I can't seem to shake it. These things take time. I don't think I'll ever get over this one. It was too real. Why don't you tell me about it? I can't remember exactly how it started. But somehow, I got word that Jimmy wanted to see me. Then, in this dream, he was still alive? No. He was already dead and buried. Go on. I found myself at this place. Like a sanitarium. Where they had him locked up. Jimmy was sitting on the bed when they came in. He looked fine first, I mean, just like himself. He even laughed, called me Willie. No one else ever called me Willie. Only there was something wrong. I could see it in his eyes. He kept saying, I was the only one who could save him. You? How? He never got to tell me. Just then we heard a car outside. It was getting dark. They were coming to take him away. Back to the grave. They? Two men, like hospital orderlies and a nurse. They came in an ambulance. But they brought a coffin. What do you suppose all of that means? It was as if he was putting his fate in my hands. Trusting in me. How did you feel about that? I was terrified. Of what? Of letting him down again. Again? I meant just letting him down. You said, again, there must have been another incident. Do you recall any? Not offhand. How badly do you want to get to the bottom of this? That's why I'm here. Then you're going to have to take some risks. Like what? Like taking a closer look at this relationship, confronting it. Are you willing to try? I think so. Let's go back to the beginning. Find out what happened. How did you first feel about him? Dina? He was the last guy in the world I would have picked for a friend. 
Matter of fact, I thought he was a joke. When we first met, I was in college back in 1950. We were doing Shakespeare's Macbeth. Jimmy was playing the part of Malcolm. There sure wasn't anything so special about him then. Not that I could see anyway. At least not at first. Before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth the earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, as would be newly planted with the time, as called... So who's your hick playing Malcolm? Transfer student from Santa Monica City College. Name's James Dean. Oh, yeah, Dean. I can't ever remember his name. Don't bother. I get a feeling that's one name you'll never see in lights. You aren't kidding. Would you two hush up? By self and violent hands. <laughs> took off her life. This. What needful else? And what needful else? <coughs> that call upon us. That calls upon us. By the grace of grace, we shall perform in measure, time, and place. So. Thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned at Scone. Jim, excuse me. There's someone over here I'd like you to meet, okay? Oh, okay. Who's that female he's talking to? Looks like Claire Folger's assistant. Claire Folger? The motion picture agent. You mean she might be interested in him? Will you look at him? Maybe he can't act, but he sure knows how to operate. Let's put this away. Keep it yourself. Cram it for midterms. Listen, would you mind not calling me Willie? I really hate that. Whatever you say. If not, that look good. Only this one. Oh, apartment on comp stock, huh? Probably too expensive, though. What's the matter? Tired of attorney life? Yeah, guess not my speed. You're not supposed to do that. Why? You want somebody else to get there first? You're really something. You checking out the door? Yeah, I can't concentrate. It's like a barracks. Where are you headed now? Up to Hollywood. Guy that says he can get me a job as an usher over at CBS. You mind for a bummer ride? I'll go see some agent up there. So you want me to represent you? Hmm? Uh-huh. Why? Because you're good. Well, you certainly have all the right answers, don't you? Do you know what I expect from my clients? Hmm. I've got a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a TV commercial coming up. I'll let you know about it. Is that all for now, ma'am? For now. Did you really go through with it? Not even for a TV commercial? Who said anything about going through with it? Well, sooner or later, you're gonna have to pay the piper. Yeah. You don't get something for nothing, not in this town anyway. Yeah, well... You let me worry about that. How'd you make out? Over at CBS. I start Monday. Doesn't pay much, but work is work. Gotta start somewhere. And maybe I could get you in, too. 
what you mean, Willie? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Because I've got to start learning. I mean, really learning. You see, well, ever since I was a kid, well, I've always known I was going to be an actor. I mean, do you ever get the feeling that, that your destiny is not in your own hands? Like there's something you just got to do and you have no control over it? Well, that's what I feel about acting. You really think it's possible, huh? I mean, make it big. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Only thing stopping you is you. Huh. You know, Willie, you and me make good team. Now we can learn from one another. How do you mean? Well, like, uh, like the other day when, when you're talking about uh, Tchaikovsky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shoot, I don't even know where that is. <laughs> Tchaikovsky's a who, not a where. He was a Russian composer. So <laughs> there, you see what I mean? Hey, why don't we share a place? Room together? Sure, why not? Hey, wh wh what do you say we uh, take a look at this place on Comstock, huh? I don't know. See, there you go. What do you mean, there I go? There I go what? Putting up barriers. Loosen up. A lot's happened. Take a chance. What do you got to lose? OK. OK! Why not? Only on one condition. Hmm? You got to stop calling me Willie. <laughs> Scout's honor. Some boy scout. Next, you'll swear in your mother's grave. My mother's dead. My mother died when I was wee. Maybe that's why I'm me. Sorry, I didn't know. I thought I heard you mention her like she was still alive and anything, you know? Now, this man, Hortense. Hortense? Hortense. I call her mom. She and my Uncle Marcus raised me. Back in Indiana. No offense, honest. Mm. Uh, you know, Willie, I got a feeling. If you and me stick together, we're gonna take this old town. We're gonna grab it by a tail and give it a spin. Jim loved to show off, do crazy things, impress people. Some people even fell for it, including Beverly, my latest conquest. Beverly was one of those Hollywood brats, you know, a movie star's daughter, but I thought she was really something. So I introduced him. I like your friend. He's a little weird, though. How do you mean? I don't know, something about him. He kind of scares me. Jimmy? No. OK, wait. You watch this now. Head down. Legs together. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're good. Did you ever think of trying out for the Olympics? No, thanks. I'll stick to acting. Jimmy wants to go back to New York, get into the acting studio, and study the method with Billy Kazan. Like Marlon Brando. Brando, Monty Kest, all the greats. Man, when well, I wouldn't get to get back east. Well, if you want to go so bad, why don't you just go? I would. My lady, this is what she's yours. Hey, I met uh, James Whitmore at CBS the other day. He studied at the acting studio. Well, why don't you ask him for the start an acting class for us? Well, I don't know him that well. What's the harm in asking? Yeah, I guess the worst he could do is say no, huh? <laughs> now you're talking, Willie. First thing I want you to know, this is not a formal acting class. As a matter of fact, let me get something straight. I'm not here to teach you acting. I'm here to learn along with you. See, learning to act is a continuing process. Acting is a craft, a serious profession. It takes time, 
patience, study, and a great deal of sacrifice. Okay, now what is acting exactly? If I were asked to sum it up in one word, I would say concentration, total involvement. That's what acting is all about. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing. To die, to sleep. And by that sleep of death, to say we end the heartaches and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. is a consummation devoutly to be wished. It wasn't like that all the time. You never knew what to expect from Jim. I mean, one minute he was warm and friendly, and then all of a sudden he turned into a wild man. Sometimes he just sulked and refused to talk to anyone. I guess that's why I didn't have many friends. At least not then. Come to think of it, he was the loneliest guy I ever knew. While there, we had some great times. Jin's sense of humor could get pretty bizarre, though. Like, you never really knew if he was being sincere or putting you on. With Jim, nothing was sacred. And the point is, you were speeding. You broke the law. There's no excuse for that, is there? No, sir. Not even if a friend was dependent on me. Friend? Yes, sir. The one who, who loaned me the card go on the job interview. I promised I'd get back in town and drive him to the hospital. Did you say hospital? Yes, sir. He's... Uh, he's dying of leukemia. I guess I just didn't... I didn't want to let him down. Did you get the job? No, no, I didn't. I'm still looking. Five dollars. Pay the bill. Next case. Hey, Walter. I'm just a poor starving student trying to work his way through college. Better, <laughs> better. What are you gonna call me? I couldn't believe it. Hey, Deb, why don't we go to your place for a swim this afternoon? Well, I'll tell you, Willie. I kind of promised Beverly we'd, um, 
Uh, huh? Jimmy and I were thinking of going out to my mother's house on the beach. Sounds great. For the whole weekend. Suits me. I don't have to be back to work till Sunday night. I mean alone. Oh. Nobody planned it this way, will you? Honest, though. I don't forget, you hate each other's guts. You hate each other. Now, the watch isn't important. The important thing is who gets it. I don't want to feel that you're just acting. Okay? Go ahead. Give me the watch. Why should I? Because it's mine. Give it to me. Go to hell. Who are you telling me to go to hell? Listen, you little creep. Who are you calling a creep, you little phony? Sure, tell me. Go ahead. Feel it, feel it. Don't lean on the phony. All right, now, hold it. Break it up. I said break it up. That's enough. Come on. Break it. Break it. Fuck you. So what's the matter with you? Look, in case I forgot to mention it, you're not supposed to kill each other. This is just an improvisation. I don't know what sense memory or what personal experience you guys drew on, but uh, you get the idea. Oh, boy, you're getting the idea. All right, everybody, let's take a break. We'll relax for a while. I don't know why I stuck around so long. I guess because he made life interesting. Never a dull moment, you know? Then, too, he was beginning to grow on me. He gave you the feeling that he really needed you. It's hard to turn your back on somebody like that. Anyway, it didn't last much longer. Why don't you move out? and just walk out on him, stick him with the rent and all. Well, he'd do it to you. Uh -huh. Jim's too loyal. Oh. Look how he's been treating me lately. You call that loyalty? That's different. We're buddies. Well, if you ask me, I think he's acting like he's got a guilty conscience. That's Bill Beverly. The crazy part is I can't seem to convince him that it doesn't really matter. I mean, really, I don't care. I was never really hooked on her in the first place. So welcome to her. Beverly who? Where are you going to tell her? I thought she knew. You sneaky little weasel. Sneaky? Look who's talking. You better keep out of this. You don't scare me, Madam Mouse. Go ahead, I dare you. Go on, I dare you. Go on! Uh, hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Jan, please. Jan! I'm sorry. Hey, come on, Willie. Don't be like that. I just lost my head, that's all. Yeah, right. Pick up the rest of my stuff in a couple of days. Rent's paid. So at the end of the month, maybe you can find somebody else. Hey, come on. I don't give a damn about the rent. You're my friend. We're a team. We're gonna stick together. Come on, we're gonna take this phony town. Yeah, tell it to the judge, Dean. Please. Don't go, Willie. You're the only friend I got. You don't need a friend, Nina. You need a spectator. He cried and carried on like Faust. Why don't you knock it off? Oh, what's he doing? Nothing. I enjoy watching my best friend squirm. Hey, Willie! Willie! I trusted you! I trusted you!
didn't see much of Jim after the split up in Santa Monica. We kind of kept out of each other's way. Then one day I heard he finally managed to get himself back east to New York. And I don't know if it was him or Lure the Big City, but it wasn't long before I turned up on his doorstep. Yeah. What do you want? Hey, that's your dinner? Mm. Who is this? It's me, Bill. Bill. Bill who? Bill Bass. Uh, Rookie. Yeah. Rookie. Where the hell are you? Right here, in New York. So, after you moved on, I hung around Hollywood about six months. Which is six months too long. Got myself a new agent. Did a couple more commercials. Met a few people in the business. Hey, I even started doing some film work. Mostly bit parts, of course. Listen, work is work. I should be so lucky. Is there anything about luck? All you gotta do is know the right people. That's not as easy as you make it sound. Yeah, this would be a real pain, though. You dance, they call the tunes. And who pays the piper? Well, you can always put it on the cuff. Split when the bill counts. Well, that takes a little more style than I got. You think they're trying to hop the actor's studio? If you are, I better warn you. It's rough. I'm still waiting for an addition. Well, I kind of decided to give up on the acting, Dina. Concentrate on my writing instead. You're gonna give up acting? Well, let's face it. Either you got it or you don't. You got it. See, so you still got your bullfight gear. Yeah. Don't get much practice here, though. Remember those practice sessions we used to have? Do I? Too. You always did check it out just before the kill. El momento de verdad. The moment of truth. Sure didn't expect to hear your voice on the end of that phone. Don't know anybody else in New York. Besides, you always said, uh, New York was what was happening. I don't know. Shoot. I never thought you were listening. It's good to see you, Willie. It's good to see you too, Dina. <laughs> Looks like you're doing all right. These yours? Those aren't friends. Those are a real thing. Mark Chagall. French, isn't he? Um, Russian, I believe. Sounds like you did some fast catching up. Some. Well, if these aren't yours, then whose are they? This belongs to the Piper. Come on. I'll buy you some breakfast. Someone I want you to meet. That was Dizzy Sheridan. 
She's a dancer. James told me so much about you. Welcome to Cuckoo Land. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Let's go get something to eat, huh? Because I'm hungry. Hey, what am I doing playing in the park? I've got to find a place to live. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you stay last night? Why? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can forget it. Poor baby. Where do you live, Dizzy? Us professional girls live at the rehearsal club. No men allowed. Damn. Aha! Why don't you guys look for a place to share? Huh? What'd you say? I said, why don't you and Willie look for a place to share? the interview with the ad agents they go. Oh, fantastic. They told me to come back in a couple of years. Well, it's a slow season. Bound to pick up soon. Didn't come back yet. He was supposed to audition for a TV show today. Been up there all afternoon. Don't be afraid. Come inside with me. No. Why did you break your hand? Huh? What? When? Just then. Your eyes, they were so remote, as if you'd come from a long way off. Another planet? Further. And then they focused and became very warm. We'll call him, Mary. This is sort of blue now. Sometimes a hazel. Oh, you can change the color of your eyes, can't you? Sometimes it just happens. Oh, uh... No, it's okay, Willie. It's okay, we're just, uh, rehearsing a scene. Oh, this is a Chris. Chris, um, White. Chris White. White. She wrote it. Hi. Hi. Seen for what? Uh, actor's studio. You got your audition. That's great. When? Um, about six weeks, if we can get it right. Oh, uh, in that case, I'd better let you guys. No, no, no. Stick around. We could use some... <laughs> Objective criticism. <laughs> Maybe we should postpone. No, I just want to go and get it over. It's probably all in there. Strasburg, Kazan, Michelle Crawford, Tennessee Williams. Shut up, will ya? Your glasses. You must have left your glasses. They're probably in that restaurant. Oh, no, it's OK. It's OK. I don't have to see clearly. No. I can sense. Burke and Marioni. No, it's too risky. Maybe we should call the whole thing off. The thing I do is risky. Acting, sculpting, racing my bike. Everything in the arts is risky. That's why I don't own anything with these boots. Every, everything on my clothes are either borrowed or <laughs> bestowed. Don't you learn how to play the recorder? What? The flute, the flute. If I can learn how to play the flute, then I can, maybe I can dance since she got it. Did you slow down? You're talking a mile a minute. Let's go over the lines, okay? No, no. <laughs> Are you scared as I am? Oh, paralyzed. I'm not going through with it. Wait a minute! Wait a minute!
James Dean and Christine White. Excuse me, uh, I'm White, and my partner had to go get his glasses. And I was wondering if you'd be so kind. I'm back. We're ready. Okay. Where the hell have you been? Running. Take off your coat. Running? Where to? Just running. Okay, right in there. Begin whenever you're ready. Dear Marcus and Mom, I have made great strides in my craft. After months of auditioning, I am very proud to announce that I am now a member of the Actors Studio, the greatest school of theater in New York. Never said a word. Very few are admitted, and it's absolutely free. It is the best thing that can happen to an actor, and I am one of the youngest to belong. Each day here in New York, I grow more as an artist. I see now that an actor must be willing to accept all experiences that life has to offer. In fact, he must seek out new experiences. To grasp the full significance of life is the actor's duty. To interpret it, his problem. To express it, his dedication. Tell Mrs. Hampton when you see her that I have never forgotten the thespian creed. Act well your part for there all honor lies. P.S. I would be grateful if you could spare $10 or so. I need it desperately. I'm sorry that when I write, I always need something. Sometimes I feel I've lost the right to ask. I shall never forget what you've done for me. I want to repay you someday. But it takes time and many disappointments to achieve success as an actor. I'll try very hard not to take too long. If I've asked at the wrong time, please forgive me. I will understand. Love, Jim. Jim changed over the next few months, a lot. It was like he suddenly found the key, some special secret, and it was beginning to open all the doors for him. The trouble was I got the feeling he was leaving me behind. Practices and he works his little fingers to the bone. He comes to them. He can't do it. He can't believe it. So he, he works and works, but he still can't do the passage. One afternoon, Schoenberg comes around to his house and he says, Would you play it for me? I says, I would be only too delighted. So he starts and, and he cooks and he cooks and he cooks. And he comes to the one passage and he can't do it. And he says, Schoenberg, a violinist would need six fingers to play this. Schoenberg sits there, he looks at his watch, and he says, I have time. I'll wait. <laughs> 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 
Hey, Willie. You awake? Mm-hmm. Why'd you take off like that? I don't know. I wanted you to meet everybody. It was your scene, Diener. I <laughs> my scene. I didn't want to barge in. I mean, how are you going to introduce me? This is my dumb friend, Bill. See how funny he dresses? I felt out of place. They all look so... I don't know, important. They are. They're my friends. Oh, Willie, 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 you gotta get over that. What? Judging by surface appearances. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Little Prince. Did you ever read it? Looks like a kid's book. <laughs> there you go. You haven't even opened the cover. What's it about? Oh, cutting through the fears, the pettiness, letting people in, finding out what really counts. You want to hear my favorite passage? <clears throat> well, it's about this little prince who comes from a very distant planet, a very tiny star. And one day, he meets this fox. And so he asks the fox to play with him, because he's lonely. But the fox says he can't, because he hasn't been tamed. So the little prince asks the fox what tamed means. Hmm. To establish ties, said the fox. To me. You are still nothing more than a little boy who is just like a hundred thousand other little boys. I have no need of you. To you, I am nothing more than a fox who is like a hundred thousand other foxes. But if you tame me, then we shall need each other. To me, you will be unique in all the world. To you, I shall be unique in all the world. If you tame me, it will be as if the sun came to shine on my life. You see the grain fields down yonder? Well, you have hair which is the color of gold. Think how wonderful it will be when you have tamed me. The grain, which is also golden, will bring me back the thought of you. Oh, and I shall love to listen to the wind in the wheat. 
Well, the fox gazed at the little prince for a long time. Please tame me, he said. So the little prince tamed the fox. And then the hour of his departure drew near. Ah, said the fox, I shall cry. Well, it is your own fault, said the little prince. I've never wished you any sort of harm, and now you're going to cry? Yes, that is so, said the fox. Then it's done you no good at all. Oh, it has done me good, said the fox, because of the cover of the wheat fields. Goodbye, said the little prince. Goodbye, said the fox. And now, here is a very simple secret. It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Men have forgotten this truth. But you must never forget it. You become responsible forever for what you have tamed. Of all the people he managed to tame, I don't think he ever did better than Dizzy. And of all the people who tried to tame him, I think she probably came the closest. <laughs> Class. I don't know how to approach it. What's it about? It's about this guy. Had a thing once. With his best friend. Ever since it's been tearing him apart. That's a rough one. I don't mean kids' stuff. Everybody does that. I mean. Really? Did you ever? Do you? Why not? <laughs> Come on. Man, I've known you to flatten guys for even joking about it. No. No, that was before I was committed to my craft. What's that got to do with it? Oh, grow up, will he? We're not in college anymore. This is the real thing. This is life. And that's a part of it. Well, you know what Stanislavski says. An actor has to be prepared. They go for writers, too? All artists. We owe it to our craft to experience everything we can. What, are you selling it? Um, Maybe some things are better left to imagination. No, even for an artist. No, life's too short. I want to do it all. Besides, you know what they say. Huh? Don't knock it till you try it. Are you kidding? I wouldn't even know how to go about it. I mean, if and when I was ready to experiment.
What's going on? Get dressed. Huh? Just get up and put some clothes on. Uh, some jeans and a shirt's okay. What for? Where are we going? Oh, come on, will you shut up and do what I tell you? Hey, you know what time it is? I didn't go to work in the morning. Just, you've got to make certain sacrifices for your art. Bull, I'll bet Brando gets his sleep. No, no, this one. I hate that one. Will you shut up and put it on? You know, you're crazy. You get up in the middle of the night, you get completely dressed. Why aren't you getting dressed? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. What's the game? Oh, there's no game. Just listen to me and do exactly as I tell you. I don't think I like this. This may be the most important step you ever take as an artist. It's going to take guts. I know I don't like this. You know the Astor Bar? Over on Times Square? Yeah, what about it? I want you to go over there. Just go to the bar and order a beer. Yeah, then no what? Nothing. Just wait. What am I waiting for? You'll see. Things will start happening. What kind of things? Things. That's what you're there for. That's what you're going to find out. I think one of us is nuts. And if I go through with that, then it's got to be me. <laughs> what wanted to do these things? Call me if you got any questions. Dina! Dina! I guess it really ought to be somebody you tamed first. I beg your pardon? Ah, uh, it's, it's my mistake, Willie. Come on home. Just using me as a guinea pig, weren't you? Okay, then why'd you tell me to come home? It is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. I hate this town. It's cold and it's dirty and it's depressing. And you hated Hollywood too. I was phony. This is ugly. Where would you like to be? Huh? Hmm? Home, on the farm. This is the best time of the year for it, too. 
Leaves are beginning to change. Harvest is almost done. Mom's starting to put up preserves for winter. My mama, I can smell the home baked bread right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut it out, will you? When do we leave? Why don't we? We can leave right now. Right this very minute. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Yes. Are you serious? You can't just take off like that. Why not? Okay, and what if this part comes up the gym? <laughs> oh. What part? Uh, I just to see the Jaguar. It uh, goes into rehearsal in a week or so. Opens in the fall. In the fall? Yeah. It's the central character. He could steal the show. Oh, well, you gotta get the part first. Nobody ever tells me anything. Mm -mm. Oh, come on. I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to get your hopes up again. For nothing. Mm -hmm. Besides, I heard they want Tony Perkins. I never heard of him. <laughs> when are you gonna know? When are you gonna know, huh? Uh, a week or so. Well, guess that shoots the trip back home. Why? Mm. Indiana's not the moon, you know. If anything came up, my agent could let us know when uh, he could send us a telegram. Mm. We could be back in mm. 24 hours. <laughs> well, that brings up another little point. Trivial, I know, but uh, where are we going to get the money for the bus fare? No. Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what bus fare? <bear? laughs> were just what he needed. He was home, and happier than I'd ever known.
The telegram cut short our visit to the farm. But before we left Fairmont, Jim had one last goodbye. From there, we thumbed our way back to good old New York. Then, on the night of December 5th, 1952, the guy whose name I once said would never be up in lights had his name up in lights on Broadway. <laughs> Well, huh? Listen, listen, listen to this. And James Dean, in an almost impossible role, delivers an extraordinary performance. So, let me see. Oh, good. Something very beautiful is about to end. Don't look so worried, Willie. I might be cuckoo, but I don't believe in miracles. It's like our visit to the farm. It's a nice dream while it lasted. You know, of the three of us, I think I like you best. Four. Started making a little headway with my television writing. It seemed every time I picked up a variety or a New York paper, there was Jim, doing another big TV show, getting another lead in an important play. I mean, he was really going places. Hi, Willie. What are you doing in Hollywood? I'm gonna grab your duds. I'll tell you about it on the way. The way where? Does it? Gadge wants me to get a tan before I start shooting. Gadge? Ely Kazan. I don't get it. You got such great reviews for the immoralist. Why walk off a Broadway hit? I didn't get along with the director. So I gave my notice open tonight. Just to do a picture in Hollywood? Oh, for Kazan. You kidding? What's the name of it? East of Eden. Good part? Lead. <laughs> what was that all? How's the right? Eh, doing a little TV. Nothing to brag about. Hey, you ever see Dizzy? Uh, she took off. Virgin Islands or someplace to dance. Kazan thinks I could win an Academy Award for this role. They never vote me an Oscar, though. Why not? If you deserved it. You gotta be loved in Tinseltown, Willie. They're gonna hate my guts. Who's they? The Philistines. The dull accountants. Sit behind the big desks and tell us what art is. Us, the talent. Us, the creative people. That's why they hate our guts, Willie. We're special. We got the gift. Gods of smile on us. They know without us and nothing. They come and go, we abide. You make it sound like it's them against us. I know the game out here, Willie. I played it for a while, remember? You let them and they'll treat you like so much raw meat. Not me, not anymore. You've changed, Dieter. Never heard you talk like this. Winged flights of harpies have escorted this trip of vengeance back to Tinseltown, Willie. Only from now on, I'm the piper. They dance to my tune. Man, I'd agree to do it at a such a lousy strip. Because in this business, you take what you can when you can. Oh. Man, where's your integrity? Oh, don't give me that integrity, bull. If nobody gives you a hand, you're on your own. You grab what comes along, right? Man, nobody gave me a hand, huh? I said a hand, not a hand. I heard what you said, and I'm telling you, nobody did a damn thing for me. 
Oh, come on, Dina. This is me, Willie. You trying to tell me nobody ever made it easier for you? Nobody opened a few doors, paved the way a little bit? That's right. You're damn right. What are you getting so excited about? Listen, nobody did a damn thing for me. I don't owe anything to anyone. Not one stinking favor. Not one lousy penny. I did it all myself. I don't kiss anybody's butt. Hello? Hey, Willie. What you up to? I'm just trying to finish this bugger of a script. Why? They're sneaking Eden tonight over to Red Sear. You want to come? Oh, no. I thought I'd wash my socks tonight. I'm on my way. your boats? Willie, didn't you hear me knocking? Sorry, Dean. I didn't feel like talking to anyone. What's going on? Why didn't you stick around after the preview? Couldn't face it. Face is that bad, huh? <laughs> bad. Why didn't you tell me so I could be prepared? I figured good, you know. But man, I wasn't ready for something like that. King Kong and Cinemascope. No bull. I'm really happy for you. Happy for me? You're a little sorry for yourself? I guess it shows, huh? <laughs> Always did. Yeah. Only tonight it really hit home. Maybe I'm dense or something. But so help me, I had no idea. I don't know what I thought you were up to these past few years. But I never imagined it was anything like... Watching you up there tonight? Believing every word? Every move, every gesture. All of a sudden, it hit home. It can happen. This is what it's all about. It's not just some dumb dream. It's not a crazy kid game we've been playing. It's for real. to you. You made it happen. You finally made it happen. Good evening. This is your Hollywood reporter, Reva Randall, with an urgent warning for Marlon Brando. Watch out, Marlon. James Dean is stealing your act.
Ever since his success in East of Eden, Dean has been treating Hollywood to his brand of sick humor and crude behavior and getting away with it. But he's not calling all the shots, at least not yet. First, Alia Kazan made him stay off his motorcycle until shooting was completed on Eden. Now, Warners has grounded him for the duration of his next for them, Rebel Without a Cause. Too bad, Jimmy. Looks like you'll just have to walk up to your nightly haunt on the Sunset Strip if you want to hang around with those weirdo playmates of yours. All right, take off, you guys. This business. I'll see you later, OK? I just know where to find me. Are you kidding? The whole world knows. <laughs> you watch too much television. Would you indulge me for a minute? and tell me exactly what you're trying to prove? What do you mean, what am I trying to prove? You can't make an omelet without breaking the eggs, will he? Now I understand. Anyway, this sounds too full of phonies. It's the only way I can stay in touch with reality. Reality? You call these social rejects reality? What? Is that all you see, huh? Just what's on the surface? See that blonde over there? See her? She comes in here every night, always alone. And I'll just... Hey, come on, please. Come on. Hi. You work over at the Oriental Theater, don't you? Yeah, in the box office. Yeah, yeah I thought I saw you there. Oh, this is, this is Bill. I'm Jim. Arlene. Will you mind if you sit down? It's a free country. Tell me something. How'd you lose your leg? Motorcycle accident. Is it your bike? My boyfriend's. How'd he come out? He didn't. Did you feel much pain? Only in my toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that. It's true. Must be weird. It stops after a while. You leave a scar? That healed over a long time ago. See? Go on, touch it if you want. <laughs> you know, you're the first guy who's ever had the guts to do that. You live far from here? Not far. Bike scare you now? Come on, I'll give you a ride home on mine. It's just outside. Reality. You see what I mean? See you around, Lloyd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Hollywood reporter, Reva Randall. 
Well, will wonders never cease? As you know, I haven't exactly been James Dean's most ardent admirer till now. Well, I spent some time with him on the set of Rebel Without a Cause, and I've got to admit, I've changed my stubborn old mind. Confidentially, behind that weirdo act, he's a charmer. And now, director George Stevens has signed Jimmy for his upcoming Giant. Is it any wonder? Warner Brothers tells me that Jimmy now gets over 5,000 fan letters a week. When I asked Elizabeth Taylor how she feels about playing opposite Hollywood's bad boy, she confided, I can hardly wait. Is that true about the fan mail? Mm. Oh, look at this. Makes me feel like Miss Lonely Hearts. Any good ones? <laughs> well, there's this one. Kid from Hollywood High. Right here in town. Look at that picture. Is that a sweet, normal, healthy, sensitive face? Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Name's Norma Brookman. Bright, intelligent kid. Lost. Completely and utterly lost. Letters to tell your guts out. She wants to meet me sometime. You're not considering it. Oh, I know, I know. I should read the letters. Dina, you're too vulnerable now. This kid's jailbait. You could wind up facing a paternity suit or rape charges. Yeah. That's why I want to meet her in a public place. With you along as a chaperone. I thought about it a lot. And I know just how you must have felt. When you tried to give your father all that money that you earned just for him. And he wouldn't take it. Oh, you mean in, in East of Eden? My mother's like that. She doesn't understand anything. That's why Daddy left us. When you did that to your brother, I really knew why. I mean, you, you were just hurt. And you were trying to hurt back. No, Cal was. Cal? Cal Trask, the character I played. Oh, yeah. What's the one thing you love most? More than anything else? Uh, life, I guess. It's our most precious gift. Not death? What? I read somewhere that you respect death more than anything else. Oh, well, respect, yeah, but that's different. From death is the only thing left to respect. It's the one inevitable undeniable truth. He said, in it lies the only ultimate nobility for man. Beyond it, through immortality, the only hope. I said that? I've always remembered. Come on, let's walk. She got it in her head that somehow I'd understand. Understand what? Her. Her hopes, her dreams, her loneliness, everything. She wanted to turn her whole life over to me. She wanted to just dump it right in my lap. They're all like that. All the ones that are right. What do they see when they look up at that screen? Themselves. Unwanted, unloved, rejected. No, 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 no. It's got to be something more than that, something more basic. They see the character you portray. They see a tormented kid trying to win his father's love. They see an alienated teenager trying to survive in an indifferent society. It's pretty good. <laughs> you roll them all together, what do you get? James Dean. He knows. He understands. If only I could talk to him. No, no, no. 
It's the eyes. The what? It's the eyes. It's got to be the eyes. What are you talking about? Did you ever notice how, how intense, nearsighted people look? Like they can see right into your soul? It does kind of exaggerate your normal intensity. Oh, with the window to the soul. Isn't that what the eyes are supposed to be? Come on. Are you serious? You believe that all the movies of men, male, and people, it's all because you're nearsighted? Well, it's got to be that. What else could it be? I'd say it took all of a year. Suddenly, Jim was the hottest young actor in Hollywood. True to his word, he was making them dance to his tune. Well, most of them, anyway. Her name was Pierre Angeli. For the first time since Dizzy, Jim had found someone he could really care for. Trouble was, she decided to marry the other guy. I don't think he ever got over it. Where'd you get him? Bruce Taylor. <laughs> I love it. What's his name? I call him Marcus. Little Marcus. Hey, he looks old enough to be my father. Huh? Oh, wow. Well, I shaved back my hair for the last few scenes of the picture. Pretty good job, huh? <laughs> They'll tell you what they want me to do next? Mm -hmm. Rocky Graciano. Somebody up there likes me. Oh. You gonna accept? Depends on the script. How's yours coming? Which one? What do you mean, which one? The one you're writing for me. The Jekyll and Hyde thing. Dinner. I'd really like to. But I, I've got to take these TV assignments now. I mean, when I get a little ahead, maybe. They offered me 100000 for this one. Wow. Let me take care of it. I appreciate your offer, but I couldn't do that. Don't worry. You'll learn it. Want me to grab that? Yeah, would you? Hello? Who's calling? Uh, he's busy right now. Can I take a message? Yes. Yes, I'll tell. Well? Who was it? Remember that kid from... Hollywood High, Norma Brookman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd she want? That was her mother. The girl took an overdose of sleeping pills. Where is she? Took it to Hollywood receiving. Dina. Dina. She's dead. I'm sorry. die or go away. My mother died when I was wee. Maybe that's why I'm me. I'll call you tomorrow.
Hey, I thought you got up to Salinas. I was just leaving. Sandy's gonna follow in the station wagon. Plenty of room. Sure you don't want to come along? I got a script to write, remember? Well, can't it wait? Uh, not if you knew my producer. He's got a mean streak this wide. <laughs> uh, I just thought I'd ask. Want me to stop by your place, feed little Marcus? Nah. Uh, I'll get him away. How come? Well, you know what a crazy life I lead. Well, if I went away sometime, never came back. Yeah, I guess. It's a lot of responsibility. Mm. Yeah. Unless you want some time to me. Listen, Diener. Thanks for the money. I mean, for the script. Can't hear a word you're saying. I got a split. You stick to it, you hear? I'll be looking over your shoulder. So long. say they came to get him and brought a coffin. What happened then? It was awful. Jimmy was clinging to the bedpost. The attendants pried him loose. And as they pulled him away, he broke and ran to me. He held on. He grabbed hold of my shirt. He was crying hysterically. And then they tore him loose. He ripped my shirt, trying to hold on. He was screaming at me. Save me, Willie. Save me. Please save me. I tried to tell him I didn't know how. But the words wouldn't come. And he clung to the door frame. And they smashed at his fingers. So they let go. And as they dragged him out, he took his fist and shook it at me. He screamed, I trusted you! I trusted you! And then, before the door closed, the nurse stood in the doorway. She said, aren't you coming? That's when I woke up. I know I had this awful feeling that I let him down. Because you lived on and he didn't. I guess so. I mean, he did so much for me. What did I ever do for him? Is that the only reason? I don't know. No. I think it's because I never let him know. 
Let him know what? Much I loved him. This is to me the loveliest and saddest landscape in the world. It is here that the little prince appeared on earth and disappeared. Look at it carefully so that you will be sure to recognize it in case you travel someday to the African desert. And if you should come upon this spot, please do not hurry on. Wait for a time, exactly under the star. Then if a little man appears who laughs, who has golden hair, and who refuses to answer questions, you will know who he is. If this should happen, please comfort him. Send me word that he has come back. <laughs>